Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and Madam Ambassador, thank you very much for being here. And I, and I just want to start by saying I appreciate your years of service and enduring years of moving around the world to dangerous places. And hearing from you today, I realize that we share some of the same feelings and experiences as an Army Reserve Surgeon. I received a call on a Monday afternoon in March of 2005 that told me I was being deployed to Iraq and I had to be out the door in the next two to three days. I, I had patients scheduled for months. I had uh, surgeries scheduled um, and had to go. So I understand that shocking feeling that, that can come with some abrupt change like that. And I was processing a few days later and uh, I was told my orders would say you're going for 18 months, but it may be a little shorter than that. But I served a year in Iraq, 2005, 2006, one of the bloodiest times of the war. And this is where I have another um, personal relationship with what you were talking about. I saw a nation in Iraq of people that craved a non-corrupt government. And sadly today, even though it helped to remove Saddam Hussein, they still have corruption concerns in Iraq. And uh, I can relate to what you said just a few moments ago, that it feels like an, un an open wound when it hasn't been resolved. But you might imagine with that military experience and background, I take an interest in military strategy and capabilities and the thoughts of those with boots on the ground, like you and Mr. Volker and Mr. Taylor. Uh, in your deposition on page 144, your quote is saying, in terms of lethal assistance, we all felt it was very significant that this administration made the decision to provide lethal weapons to Ukraine. Just real quick, who in general makes up we all? Would that be the team I mentioned? Yeah, can I just, just one sec. What, what line is that? Well, I, I have to move on. I only, so you said we all felt it was very significant that this administration made the decision to provide lethal weapons to Ukraine. I assume that is those that have boots on the ground. And, and then this administration, I assume you meant the Trump administration. Yes. Yeah, okay. In your deposition, uh, also on page 144, you spoke about the generosity of Congress. You mentioned it today, increasing aid to Ukraine. And part of your deposition, um, after that statement that I quoted before, you asked, did you advocate for that? You responded, yes. I, then you were asked, did you advocate for that prior to the new administration in 2016? And you responded, well, yeah. On page 148, you were, the question was, you were, were you satisfied that the administration was doing what was necessary to support Ukraine? You said, in what respect? And they said, in, you know, helping them deter Russian aggression, helping them with foreign aid and foreign assistance. And you said, yeah. And I agree that that lethal assistance was very significant, as you said. And I thank you for that. And I thank Mr. Volker and I thank Mr. Taylor. You know, um, the, um, you know, Acting Ambassador Taylor was uh, here Wednesday. He testified about the President's decision to withhold lethal aid. And he said the President felt it, it might provoke Russia. And Mr. Taylor contested then that Russia has already been provoked and they have invaded the Ukraine. You know, President Obama had the right to make his own foreign policy and make his own decisions as President of the United States, correct? Yeah, I mean, there's an interagency process, and obviously Congress but is he has, as well. He, he has the right as president. I respect the interagency process. I'm getting to that, actually. But he has the right to make his own foreign policy and make his own decisions as president of the United States, as do all presidents, correct? Yes. So we have one president, Obama, who denied lethal aid altogether, in spite of ambassadors and other boots on the ground recommending making that recommendation, such as you did. We have another president, Trump, who vetted those that were going to receive the aid and provided it consistent with your intra-agency recommendations and that of your, your colleagues. Let me just ask you from a military standpoint, without javelins, would, would you agree the Russians had much greater military offensive options and flexibility in their effort to attack the Ukraine with, without the Ukraine having javelins. Yeah, I mean, they had another option, um, although the tank war has, is no longer the war that is being fought in Ukraine. And, but I'm just saying with the javelins. Yeah, it's another option. And there's a reason for that. 
because the javelins are there. And so I think that that changes the scenario. But I, I just wanted to, to make that point that the president has a right to have their own foreign policy and to make their own decisions. And with that, I yield back. Yeah. If I could just um, supplement one of my answers. Of course. Um, so I want to thank you for your service as well. Um, but what I'd like to say is while I, I um, obviously don't dispute that the president has the right to, um, to withdraw an ambassador at, at, at any time for any reason, um, but what I do wonder is why it was necessary to smear my reputation. Also. Well, I wasn't asking about that, but thank you very much, ma'am.